Okay, this week we're going to put the depth finder on the pond boat tall. This is an Elite 5 uh, unit made by Lowrance. It's a super unit for uh, not a whole lot of money. Uh, I think $3.99 is the price on them right now. Uh, it's a 5 inch screen. You've got color. You've got uh, chirp sonar. And in addition, you've got uh, GPS. Now, normally on this size boat, wouldn't need GPS, but uh, Lowrance offers a program called Insight Genesis where you can record your sonar data and create maps that can be loaded onto the unit uh, on an SD card. Now, uh, a lot of the lakes I fish in this electric only boat uh, don't have mapping available. So this Insight Genesis is an important tool. Uh, it'll give us a lot of information about the lakes that we don't normally have, and it's real simple to use. Naturally, the first step is determining where you want to place the unit. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, when the trolling motor is raised and lowered that everything clears. Uh, since my cable runs out the right side of the trolling motor, I'm going to put it over here on the left side. Uh, we uh, want to make sure to also that when the trolling motor is up high, the motor will still clear it. So I've got it set far enough back that no matter what level it is, trolling motor will clear. Now this quick release bracket, it's got a pretty quick pull up and release. Uh, we've got it mounted at the angle we want to. We're just going to mark the holes and then drill it and put the screws in. The Elite 5 from Lawrence that I'm going to install on this soft boat has got uh, a couple of different options when you order it on transducers. You can go with a standard 83200 kilohertz uh, transducer which gives you your traditional 2D sonar or you can purchase their combination transducer which is called an HDI transducer which has got the standard 83200 in it in addition to down imaging. Now the down imaging gives you another option to look at. Uh, some images are easier to read on it especially if you're new to electronics so it's a great option to have both on there. We're going to mount it on the trolling motor uh, since this boat doesn't have an outboard and I like to have uh, sonar directly under where I'm fishing if it's all possible. And uh, what we're going to use is the HDI transducer adapter from Lowrance to mount it on here. It's a pretty simple installation. Uh, it comes with everything you need in the kit. Uh, it's got uh, the actual adapter which serves as a transducer shield as well. Uh, looks like this and the transducer fits right down in it and then of course it's got the hose clamp that goes around the trolling motor and through here to hold it snug on there. I've used this exact setup on my big boat and had very little issues with it at all. I pounded it off of rocks and stumps and everything else and these uh, shields hold up really well uh, and it's fairly economical. It's $19.99 for the transducer adapter. Pretty easy to use. Transducer just slips into the uh, into the shield goes up under a little notch here, cord out the front, and then of course we want to just put it on the bottom of our trolling motor like this. Just like that with our cord to the back. Hose clamp, we'll take it loose and run it around it. Okay, I've got the transducer in the shield, made sure I got it up under this little notch which keeps it in place, and I've got the hose clamp fed through it. Then we're just going to slide it over the uh, trolling motor head. Uh, you can point it either way, but I prefer to have the cable coming toward the back. It gives a little bit more protection when you bounce it off of something, and it's not going to make any difference in how the image reads. Take the screwdriver, tighten it down good and snug, and then I'm going to want to cut this uh, tag end off just so it's not hanging out. It doesn't snag on weeds or anything else that's going through the water. Okay, once I've got the transducer on there, we're going to run our cable along the shaft of the trolling motor and along the housing that holds our cables gives us a nice clean installation. There's several different ways you can go about that. Uh, a lot of people like cable ties. I personally like to use electrical tape because it gives you a cleaner installation uh, and you can change it out pretty quick without any tools on the water. Now we're going to keep the cable as tight to the trolling motor as we can get it. Start off low, wrap it three or four times, get us a nice clean I'll tie right there. We're going to want to come up a little bit on the shaft and do that again. And you can put as much or as little as you want on there. But you've got to be careful on a foot control when you get to this point right here. Because what you want to do is tie it off below the joint. Then we're going to have to put a loop of cable in here so that when you turn this trolling motor, there's enough slack in there for it to turn. Then I'm going to tape it off right above it. 
Now once I get to this point, I'm not going to put any ties or tape any higher until I get above the bracket itself. That way uh, you can still slide this up and down on the trolling motor. The motor guide bracket's got a notch in it for that cable to run into, makes it nice and clean. Now you can see where I've run that cable, there's our loop for steering, run under the bracket, and I've come around and followed the cable all along. What I'm gonna do in this instance is run it into the opening up front here and then come out under my bracket on the other side. Okay, now we've got our bracket in. Uh, we've got it all wired nice and neat on the deck. The only thing left to do was to hook our uh, hot wire and ground wire from the back end of the boat into the power cable from the uh, unit itself. Now, this cable has two leads on it. One of them's got a red, black, and a yellow. That's the one we want to use. The yellow wire is a wake-up wire for anything else on the network, so we're not using it in this instance. No need to hook it up to anything. Uh, I used uh, butt connectors and heat shrink so that they'll prevent any corrosion in here. The only thing left to do is go to the back end of the boat, wire in the fuse, and uh, hook, up, hook it up to the battery and the unit should be up and running. Like any other Lowrance unit, this one comes with everything you need for your installation, including uh, this fuse holder here uh, that comes with a three amp fuse. It's important you go ahead and install this. You want to make sure that your unit's protected at all times and it's a waterproof unit so it's not a problem to install. I've gone ahead and installed a butt connector on one end and then my connector to go on to the battery terminal on the other end. I'll just make the connections, wire it up, and we'll be all set to go. battery terminal. And then we've got our ground wire already wired up. Put it on as well. ready to go. Uh, we should be able to just plug the unit in up front and it should come on and work. All right, now that all the wiring's done, I'm going to plug the wires in the back. Uh, they're male and female, so you can't get them swapped up. Very easy to do. They're watertight connections. Just make sure you get them screwed in good and tight. Then we're going to slide it on the quick connector. Hit the power and we should be up and running. <laughs> 